Welcome to back to our 3 p.m. show, Getting Answers. We have been covering the increased reporting of attacks on Asian Americans in the Bay Area and certainly across the country during the pandemic. Now, in the last 12 months, a 12-month span, there have been 6,600 reported cases to the Stop AAPI Hate online website. That certainly just scratches the tip of the iceberg. There are many more cases. But along with that rise, we've also seen some tremendous shows of solidarity and so many different ways for people to help stop the attacks. Now, one of the efforts was just several months ago where a man raised funds to distribute hundreds of air horns to those in Oakland's Chinatown and beyond in different parts of the Bay Area. Another enormous effort underway right now is by the Chinese American Planning Council and it's called the Yellow Whistle. What they're doing is they're distributing half a million whistles to seniors across the country. Much of that effort is happening right here in the Bay Area. And joining me now to talk more about it is Dr. Agnes Su Tang. Thank you, doctor, for joining us today and for taking the time. Thank you so much, Dion, for inviting us. We have been following your Instagram coverage. Oh. Thank you so much for bringing awareness to historical discrimination against Asians, Americans, and especially at this critical time. I really appreciate your support. I couldn't keep going forward without it, certainly, and without hearing from people on social media, which is how I learned about the campaign to begin with. So let's dive right in. I want to talk about the personal level of things because you know, I started dedicating my reporting to these attacks after learning about an old man who was attacked and humiliated while collecting recyclables in San Francisco. Maybe you saw that on my Instagram. What ignited this for you to start the Yellow Whistle Project? Because I always think there is that fire within that drives us to be passionate about something. Absolutely. I can pinpoint, and here's my yellow whistle. Um, I can pinpoint the exact moment. On March 29th, as the entire United States watched that horrific video of a Filipino lady, Vima Kari, mm. walking to church in Midtown Manhattan and being assaulted, beaten, while two doormen closed the door and did nothing. We were, all of us were angry. As human beings, that's our instinct is to help. However, we were just surprised that no one, no one, not only offered to help her, but also closed, but closed the doors on her. So a friend of mine texted me and said, we've got to do something. We cannot just stand by and watch. We decided that the next day we're going to order pepper spray. However, we learned that pepper sprays are, it's actually illegal to distribute pepper spray in, in New York City, mm. um, even though you can possess a pepper spray. And we also, um, we also looked at personal alarms, but those require batteries. So we decided to go with a whistle. And that idea came out of, um, I'm, I am an archeologist and when we work out in rural areas of the world, we always carry a whistle. It is a simple gadget of alarm, of sounding alarm without language barrier. When you hear a whistle, when you're blowing a whistle, you know somebody is, is in danger. And that's how it happened. It started with 5,000 whistles, quickly went to 10,000 whistles, and 50,000 whistles. Now we're, we have already distributed um, 200,000. Wow, that's so impressive. And you're right, because a whistle blow is a universal language that everyone knows as a signal for help, especially when it is deployed in a setting such as a city like New York or in San Francisco. I want to talk a little bit more about the whistle itself. I know you showed it on your wrist. Can you tell me why you chose to do a wrist uh, attachment versus a lanyard. Also why yellow was chosen because for the longest time I associated the color yellow with yellow peril. I heard growing up so often that men liked Asian women because they had yellow fever and I tried to stay away with it. Clearly not with my dress today, but for the longest time I did. 
Well, you look lovely in yellow, and yellow in nature is a color of spring, of daffodils, of hope, of optimism. However, since 1882, when the term yellow peril was first instituted in American media and weaponized, that color has been weaponized as an instrument of xenophobia and specifically anti-Asian racism since the Chinese Exclusion Act. So we decided to reappropriate, take back that color of yellow and make it the color of hope the color of unity. Mm. And you asked an excellent question. Um, we at first had considered putting a whistle on a lanyard, which is typical uh, for a soccer coach. However, what we realized was that during an attack, a lanyard can actually, um, a whistle attached to a lanyard can actually harm the victim even, even more, yes. even more critically than if we were to put it on the wristband, which comes off very easily. There's also a message on the yellow whistle. It says, we belong. This was a slogan that my husband came up with because he has been in the United States since he was 10. And he said, I have never felt that I did not belong. This is our country. This is, we stand by all Americans. We are American and we belong. Yeah. So we want this to be a symbol of solidarity of all Asians and all Americans. This is so well thought out from the color to the messaging and to what you want to achieve. I know people already on Facebook are chiming in to say yes, they too remember that incident that you just mentioned about the doors being closed and nothing being done to help that particular Asian woman. So clearly it's resonating with our audience. How can they get involved and what organizations have you partnered with to make it happen here, the rollout in the Bay Area? We are independent campaign that it's and you can visit us at www.theyellowwhistle.org. We have already built an alliance of over 100 partners, including, I believe, over 20 in the Bay Area, um, one of which our major hub, regional hub, is APAPA, in, based in Sacramento, as well as um, the one in San Francisco. Please come to our website and contact us. We are sending out all 300,000 whistles at no cost. And people have asked us about this. The reason is there is no price for human lives, for dignity, and for humanity. These whistles can potentially save lives. Wow. Dr. Agnes Tsu Tang, what a strong message you are sending, and congratulations to the success you've already seen. I'm sure we will continue to follow up on how the campaign is going and how those whistles are being distributed. Thank you for being with us.